Hello guys, Chris here from Norfolk Sea Council. Um, we're basically uh, a new YouTube startup channel and we are now going to be learning some more video bits and pieces so we can start bringing you battle reports, um, painting tutorials and reviews on codexes. So this is our first video, this is the Codex Tower Empire. This is the project that I'm going to be working on. Um, it's basically like a tale of six gamers kind of thing. We're all picking a new army, especially with the new army boxes coming out. And this is the army I've picked. This is my first Fire Warrior from the new box. I finished him last night. And so that's the colour scheme I'm going for. And that will be the army I am hoping to um, get some success with. This is the Codex. Beautiful book. Um, Love the new the new codexes. Their quality of the um, books is far better than they ever were. I'm happy to pay the money for it, and I'd rather have an actual book to hold than a digital edition. Getting into it, some lovely artwork, fantastic colour sections. Got all the history of Tau Empire, um, previous battles, crew, Farsight. You know, just all background, how the uh, caste system works, so their actual society, the military structure, the set worlds. Um, this is just a short breakdown of everything in the list, just in their background. Colour section, with these kind of computer coloured in ones to show you different colour schemes and, and things, different markings for each particular army and each particular suit a bit more colour section now this is the colour scheme I'm doing obviously as I just showed you and um, the tower set gorgeous new models I'm really impressed with the how they've recast the fire warriors um, even though they look the same they're not they're you know far better far far more detailed um, ghost keel absolutely stunning commander and cold star battle suit Again, gorgeous model, well worth the extra money. All the Crisis Battle Suits are also, if you don't know, have been redone as well. All new um, parts to them, different bits on the sprues, very good. Storm Surge, obviously, is absolutely gorgeous as well. Here's the forces of the Tau Empire, and this gives you a breakdown of how you would want to build a Tau list. So it's almost like their force organisation chart. Um, it gives you their headquarters and then the standard hunter cadre which is the basis what basically what your, your minimum requirements are so three to six units of fire warriors for example yeah. one to three units of stealth suits or crisis suits one to three units of pathfinders piranhas vespered and one to three units of broadsides hammerheads whatever that gives you your hunter cadre and then you get these contingents to add on to um, retaliation cadre and infiltration cadre are two that I've found to be really strong. They're actually very clever if you can use them together. Infiltration cadre, um, if you lose a unit from the infiltration cadre, on the start of your following phase, um, reserves automatically come on through deep strike. So, if you give away first turn to your opponent, then if they destroy any of these units, just de just deploy one of them in the open, get them blitzed. The start of your first turn, a commander, three units of crisis suits, an XV-8 broadside battle suit team and a riptide can all immediately come on on your turn one in their deployment zone. Um, or wherever you want, you know, just deep strike them in. The Pathfinder teams can all have homing beacons and so can the stealth suits. So if you've got five units there, with homing beacons, that's five units you can deep strike within six inches of without having to scatter. Bear in mind they're all infiltrating, you know, you're going to then be deploying very, very close to enemy lines on turn one with all of that via deep strike. So that's pretty um, nifty if you if you mix the two together to make the benefits of their special rules. Um, that is really, really good. Other than that, I mean, you've got other bits and pieces, Hammerhead one, um, Aircast set for the Flyers. None of them really 
seem to be. I mean, they're all worth taking, but but in all honesty, if you're going to limit yourself to formations, I wouldn't. I would, the retaliation cadre for me is by far the strongest uh, one that I would include. Definitely. Now you have all your your data sheet explanation and your war gear list. Nothing's really changed on this. Um, give you a list of your weapons you can add onto your crisis suits. Um, signature systems. There's a few smart ones, but. A lot of them are, if your commander doesn't move, you ignore cover. Or, sorry, if your commander doesn't fire, you ignore cover. If your commander doesn't fire, you get to re-roll to hits. But really, if you're going to put him in a unit of broadside, something like that, it's just a waste of 150 points to do that. So personally, I would be making a more tooled up commander with probably with the Iridium battle suit, giving him toughness 5, a 2 plus save. Shield generator, 4 plus invulnerable, he's absolutely nails then. Toughness 5 helps a lot with insta-kill, so that will keep him alive a lot longer, especially if you're deep striking in. There's no end of strength 8 blast templates now. Strength 10 blasts are a lot uh, more rare, so that you're probably going to have a, a higher chance of survival with him for that. For 25 points for plus 1 toughness and a 2 plus save is well worth it. Most armies would pay that for just a 2 plus, so... Good, good thing there. Um, stimulant injector is feel no pain. Again, you can do it. It's 35 points if you wanted to put it on a riptide, so it's a bit too much, I think, for myself. Um, but that's another one worth having. I would definitely, definitely pick a unit um, with velocity trackers, probably two broadsides with the missiles, velocity tracker, and then maybe even early warning, because you can then get... Um, interceptor and skyfire and a unit of two broadsides um, they pump out eight strength five twin linked and eight strength seven if you fire at normal ballistic skill interceptors that's pretty much any plane that is going to come on is just going to get obliterated um, you know on average rolling you, you should take down any plane with armor I'm a 12 or less, you, you should be destroying them before it's even done anything. So that, that's good. Well worth taking. Um, straight into the actual list itself. Commander, briefly talked on that already. For me, the Iridium Armour is fantastic. Cold Star Battlesuit is an option. It makes him a flying monstrous creature. You don't get fear or smash or vector strike. So he doesn't, you know, he's not a fly, uh, flying hive tyrant or anything like that. But... It's good to just be able to jump him around 24 inches, um, high output burst cannon, 6 shots, and a missile pod. It's good for jumping around, catching back armors of things. You know, if you've got something like an orc battle wagon where you've got 14 at the front, which you're not going to scrape, you can spin around the back. And I think there are only 10 or 11 around the back. So you, with, with your missile pods and your, your higher strength burst cannon, you can, you can usually find a way through there. Um, I think a commander, any, anything over... A thousand points should be auto include. Uh, you need to take one. Ethereal's good. They're good combinations with them if you want to make a make a bubble, a defense line bubble, um, where you have two or three units of fire warriors. You know, put your broadsides behind them. Ethereal in the middle will then be given everyone um, leadership ten, which is awesome. And also, you know, you can give a benefit to someone within twelve. So you've got feel no pain six plus, which is really good actually. And then also you can give Stubborn, which is absolutely fantastic. Bear in mind, you're already giving them your leadership of 10. And then making them Stubborn as well. Can't really complain of that. Or the one, I think, which is the most used, which is Storm of Fire, which gives you an extra shot with pulse weapons. So say you've, you're, you're surrounded by four units of 10 Fire Warriors. Someone moves within rapid fire range. You're shooting 40 shots basic. 80 shots by the time you've got your rapid fire in there. 120 shots by the time you put the Ethereal in there. That that's going to cripple pretty much any anything you can hurt is going to is going to struggle to stand up to that level of firepower. Especially if you throw two or three marker lights in there as well. You know, a Pathfinder team light them up, um, make all those fire warriors hit on twos with that. The ignoring cover, fantastic, well worth having. The only thing is you do have to keep him safe. If you if he dies, you lose a victory point. So potentially they could take a warlord point for your commander and a warlord point for your ethereal, even if he's not your ethereal. So he is worth an extra point. So something worth thinking about. 
good for benefits, but very unsurvivable. Farsight, he's pretty cool. Not really looked through much, too much um, into taking him in a list. Um, nice model, but but for me, I'd rather make my own commander, make my own background, go like that. Shadow Sun, Shadow Sun is is clever. You know, you can get a few extra bits and pieces with with her. Um, you know, she's always shrouded and stealth, so you're going to be getting a, a four plus cover save in the open, which is pretty clever. Um, but realistically, I think for the, for the points for what you get at a toughness three model, um, you know, one, one wound at strength six. I mean, everything's strength six now. You look around, there's there's Tyranids, twin link devourers shooting twelve shots, twin link strength six. That's going to eat through the unit, and you only need one wound, and that's that's her over and done with. So. For me, not not worth anywhere near it for the points. Um, on she again, you know, a, an ethereal who's toughness three, um, with no armor save. I mean, he's got a shield generator, so he gets a four plus and vulnerable. But why would you ever want to be sending him into combat? And in honesty, he's he's all right in combat against a unit of Termagants or a unit of Grot. But other than that, I mean, even Space Marines are going to batter him. So next up is Onvar. He's pretty awesome. He's never ever going to kill anything. Weapon skill 1, strength 2. So he's never going to be awesome for damage. <clears throat> but, yes, he's awesome. 100 points, well spent. As opposed to another Ethereal, which has 2 wounds with 50 points. He has 4 wounds, so double the wounds, instantly worth 100 points. He can cast two invocations. Once again, um, is double as effective as one ethereal. He gets two body cards, which each have two wounds. So again, absolutely awesome. Really good for the points. And then this makes it even better. Once he has taken a wound, or his unit suffers one or more wound, roll a d6. <clears throat> if it's equal to or higher than the AP, then the wound is discounted. Wounds of AP1 weapons are automatically discounted. So if you hit him with a melter gun, he ignores it. His whole unit ignores it, not just him. Um, <clears throat> which for me is fantastic. Someone shoots it with a strength 10 AP2 blast. Get you 4 plus cover save. So uh, fail 1. Roll a 2 plus. Passed. Brilliant. He's going to gonna survive. Never ever put him in a devil fish. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. You know, as soon as you move him up, he's going to get combated. And he'll die in combat. Um... You know, most combat attacks, AP5, AP6. You know, Chainsword's going to ignore his save. And you're going to, I think, oh, shoot an attack anyway. So you're going to ignore his save and ignore any sort of invulnerable. So he, he, he's going to be butchered in combat. Need to keep him out. But he's strong because you get to do two of the invocations. So you can give a unit feel no pain and make it fire twice. The, or every unit within 12 do that. Very good. Kedra Fireblade. He's okay, maybe if you're going to do 40k in 40 minutes, you know, 400 point force, he's an alright leader for that. Um, if you stay still, pulse rifles or pulse carbines get an extra shot. Okay, yeah, fair enough. That's good enough, but for the 10 points less, you can get an ethereal, which is plus one leadership extra on top of that. And also, he gets to do the invocation, uh, lets them fire all the time, even if they've moved, they get an extra shot. So, really, he's never going to see... <clears throat> any playtime with myself. Dark Strider, 100 points, toughness 3, 5's up save, no invulnerable. Um, never worth it for me, you know, no matter what, you know, he gets a few benefits, but he's just a Pathfinder basically for 100 points. <clears throat> Strike teams, yeah, now this is the best Tower Troops have ever been, probably the best they'll ever be. Strike teams are awesome. Pulse Rifles, I wouldn't say to do Pulse Carbines, Pulse Rifles are range 30, Rapid Fire and two shots within 15, Pulse Carbines are getting Assault to 18, so you're not really getting any extra range, you're going to get the extra sh extra range if you stay still, well even if you move, you're going to get the extra range with these all the time, so Pulse Carbines are completely pointless for me, um, yeah, yeah they got pin in but everything ignore, ignores pin in or has a good um, good enough leadership these days or synapse anything like that so always 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 auto include would be pulse rifles 
Turrets, I would take maybe one turret with one unit, just if I sit them on a backfield objective with a turret, it's just an extra four, strength five, AP five, ignoring cover and no need for line of sight shots. So that's good. Um, Breacher teams, I completely overlooked them when I first got the book, thought I'd never take them. Reread the rules, within five inches they become strength six, AP three, two shots. That's awesome. So you can get out of a devilfish, you can move them up 12, deploy out two. Um, I think you can't do that anymore actually, you might be able to move up six, get out six, whatever way. Um, you can still move right up turn one, turn two, move up again, deploy them out. And then you can fire, if you've got an ethereal in there, you can fire 30 shots at strength 6 AP3. Are you just going to obliterate any, just pick a unit and you'll just wipe it to pieces. Maybe not Terminators, okay, two plus saves. But you're still wounding them on twos. And if you can send a few Markalites in there, um, say you do get four Markalite hits and you're shooting against a Space Marine unit, you're going to get 20 wounds. On average rolls, you're going to get... 20 wounds on Space Marines, ignoring armor saves, ignoring cover saves, if you hit them up with, say, four marker lights. So, yeah, they're awesome. And the field amplifier replay, you just put a 12-point drone in there, and uh, the whole unit has a 5-plus invulnerable save, so they're far more survivable now. I would never foot slog with them, though. They still need a devil fish to get up there. Crew are fantastic. Crew are always going to be what crew are they're a strong enough unit they're okay um but they are really really good to take in the list you know it's never ever going to come toe to toe with the unit space marines never 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 but if you use them right you use them to their strengths not their weaknesses they'll be good stick them in the ruins get four plus cover save give them sniper rounds for a pointer model you know a hundred odd points you're going to unit 15 with sniper rounds i think it's 105 points that is Mark light up something like a Wraith Knight, hit him on twos, all with sniper rounds, wounded on fours, running on sixes. That is an awful amount of wounds. If, you, if you're in rapid fire range, just 30 shots, twos to hit. So on 30, you're going to average you get 25 hits, fours to wound. Say 13 wounds with two rending on a Wraith Knight. Beautiful. For 100 points, well worth it. Um, I wouldn't bother with Hounds. And I wouldn't borrow with the crew tox, and I wouldn't personally bother with the shaper. In all honesty, too many points. Uh, yeah, he's got three wounds, but for the sake of <laughs> um, fifteen points, you could pretty much get another three crew. So no, never for me. You get the extra three shots with three extra crew, and he could be instant killed. So yeah, that's what I do. Stealth battle suits, lovely models. Such a shame they're just nowhere near worth the ninety points they're asked for. Um, you know, you're going to infiltrate 18 inches away. Um, a unit's going to move up, shoot some bolt guns at them. One wound each with a three plus save. Never, ever, ever. You know, a unit of five of these is going to cost you 150 points plus upgrades. And you're going to get rattled down like a unit of five space marines would. So they're just never, ever, ever. You know, there is basically the points of three space marines now for. A worse stat line than three space marines. A worse stat line than one space marine. Um, yeah, just never ever going to be good enough in this current edition. Crisis suits, yes, fantastic. You have to tailor them though, in my opinion. Making a unit like the, this unit here is terrible. So you're going to jump out, you're going to think, right, yeah, okay, our aim is a land raider. So I'm going to shoot my twin link fusion blaster at the land raider, maybe hit, maybe do something, immobilize it, whatever. And then this dude is going to do his missile pod, his plasma, which can't hurt it, with his shield generator for some reason. Um, this guy's got a burst cannon, which isn't going to do anything. He has got a target lock, so he can shoot someone else with his three string five shots at BS3, um, which is going to do absolutely nothing. So, yeah, I, I don't know. The, the, a unit, making a unit like this is ridiculous. You, you, they're, they're designed to be the unit that can take on anything, but they can't. They're, they're just not. They have to be tailored. Um... I would take units with two fusion, you know, twin link fusion blasters, and then any unit of three twin link fusion blasters. I'd give one of them a flamer, just so they have a bit of multi-purpose. Say you, you know, you deep strike down, melt up a transport, <clears throat> blow it up, ten orcs get out. You can then flame them, or the following turn, you know, if you thrust back enough, you can move up again and flame them. Um, 
or if they charge you, you get D3 um, standard shoot shots with it. So that's all right. But I would tailor them. <clears throat> I don't think they're worth... The burst cannons are never worth the points on them. They just they just can't pump out enough shots, not high enough ballistic skill. I would take twin ink fusion blasters in a unit of three with a flamer, give them two shield drones each and deep strike them in and have them as a dedicated anti-tank unit. Bodyguards. I was just looking at this earlier and thinking, why would you ever take bodyguards? Yeah, okay, you're all plus one leadership, but they're crisis bodyguards so you have to put the independent character in there with them who is higher leadership than they are so they're 10 extra points a model for absolutely nothing you could put these with your crisis commander and they'd use his leadership the same as these will and that is literally the difference you pay 10 points more a model to have a, a red helmet <laughs> that you know Mad for me. For me, I don't. I don't see why they can. You know, fair enough. Okay, yeah, the commander gets killed. You get plus one leadership. Okay, maybe, but never. You know, the same ballistic skill, same strength, same toughness, same wounds, same initiative. Just phew, waste of points. Ghost kill. Absolutely awesome looking bit of kit. Really, really like it. Um, looks stunning. It, is it going to make the list? No. In all honesty. Yeah, okay, cool, you get stealth. You can give it a drone and give it shrouded. Yeah, okay. But <clears throat> he isn't going to do enough damage for his points. I mean, you give him, you know, a couple of the, a couple of drones and a couple of upgrades like the fusion blasters. He's 150 points. Never going to kill that back. He's going to be a big target. He's going to get shot at a lot. And I don't think he's survivable enough to really do any damage whatsoever riptides are riptides they're they're awesome um the meta has slightly changed now they're not as good as they were last edition last edition you would take a riptide you'd give him the feel no pain you'd give him the two um sheer missile drones and he'd be invincible you would literally just spend all day just firing at people and they wouldn't be able to touch him this you know, addition is, is based slightly more on tanks, really. Tanks are a lot harder to kill than troops now. A lot of things are strength D. Uh, a six on a D weapon chart still kills him in one shot. Um, fair enough, you get things like Wraith Guard who are minus one, so they'll never get that six, which is good. Um, but, yeah, he's still not as good as he was. But, I would take. I would always take the um, Ion Accelerator for five points. The burst cannon. You know, even if you uh, use your Nova Reactor and overcharge it, twelve shots, strength six, rending. Yeah, okay. It's a twin link brain leech devourer on a on a hive tyrant, like, and that's twin linked even. So it's not even as good as that. So no, no not for me. Ion Accelerator. You can shoot strength eight AP two blasts all day long. And then if you want to overcharge, you can make strength 9. It's not a real big jump for the sake of losing a wound, so I don't think I'd ever really do it unless it was something armor 14 I was shooting at. But it's still nice to have the option. I would just run him at 185 points. I would not waste any points on Feel No Pain or any of that. It's just not worth it nowadays. So 185 points, Riptide, Iron Accelerator, and I'll probably only be taking one. Whereas last edition, maybe two or three were as well. Or include drones I'm just going to pretty much skip straight over them no they can't do anything yes you can give them marker lights to make a marker drones yes that makes them less efficient than pathfinders for more points to model why would you ever take drones I don't know their shooting is worse than firewires their marker light abilities are worse than pathfinders and they're more points pointless 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 and they're not scoring you can never take an objective with them so why would you ever do it piranhas yeah, again, pretty easy to kill. Front armor 11 is, is average. I mean, it's a rhino, but a unit of three of them is nifty. Turbo boost them up. A unit of three with fusion blasters, they have to be dealt with. They're going to back armor anything, even if they don't need to back armor. You know, your strength 8, AP 1, 2d6. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. A unit of three um, is, is well worth it. For, for me personally, just, just to give someone something they have to kill. 
You have to kill them. You can't just leave them. I mean, unless you, I mean, even if you're Tyranids, I was gonna say, unless you're Tyranids, they can't blow up your vehicles, but they're gonna eat through a unit of, um, you know, Carnifexes. Two to win them, no saves. Pathfinders, absolutely brilliant as they always have been. Yes, they're easy to kill. Yes, you need to use them the right way, but mark a light them up for other units. Um, as we were talking earlier, they make a breacher squad three times more effective than if it wasn't have mark lights. Imagine shooting four mark lights at a Space Marine unit with them, you're hitting on twos and ignoring cover with your breacher team then at strength six AP three. You're gonna on, on average rolls from thirty shots, you're gonna hit you're gonna kill twenty marines if you've mark lighted them. And you're only going to kill six if you haven't. So that makes them more than three times more efficient for other units. And for the sake of 11 points a model, I'm definitely taking two units, maybe even three, um, just to light everyone up. They make every other unit in the army so much better. Yes, they'll draw a lot of fire, um, but I wouldn't bother giving them any upgrades. The ion rifle, I think, is they can have. Yeah, ion rifle or rail rifle, 15 and 10 points respectively. Um definitely not worth the point you're never going to shoot them and even if you do this is what one shot okay yeah strength six ap3 i believe but it's one shot like you're probably not going to hit with it and even if you do you're not going to do any damage why not just pump out mark light hits and if, if there's nothing to mark a light if you literally have no need to mark light anything which i don't think you ever will have unless they're the last unit on the battlefield You've still got your strength five two shot guns, which are better than one strength six shot eight gun anyway. So, unless you're fighting armor twelve, um, yeah. So, but they're they're fantastic. Auto include all day every day, even in a four hundred point four side attacker unit. Devilfish, the meta has changed um, from last edition. Devilfish weren't worth it. Devilfish now are really worth it. Needing to be AP1 or AP2 to destroy it, needing 6 on that chart, makes them awesome. 4 units of Fire Warriors, 4 Devil Fish, you don't even have to put them in it. I mean, I'd probably take 2 Breacher Teams, 2 Fire Warrior Teams. Deploy the 2 Fire Warrior Teams at the back, let their Devil Fishers go off and take cover. Um, and then they can just nip in and steal objectives. Well worth it, their objective secured troop choice. So you can drive up to an objective with a whole unit of something else on there. Say there's a, a whole unit of, I don't know, gargoyles on there. You drive up to it, your objective is secured, they're not, you've taken it. Well, good. Super mobile, first cannon's all right. I'd give it a seeker missile for eight points just to make it a bit of a threat. You have to worry about it. You're going to blow up respect, you know, other transports. Say you've got, you're facing down four rhinos with four devilfish. The devilfish are going to win every day. You've got your seeker missiles, you're going to penetrate the rhinos. Um, and they're going to do nothing back to you. Um, yeah, okay, fair enough. Rhinos are half the points, maybe even a bit less. But brilliant for me. Fantastic. Going to see them in the army for sure. This is the weakest part of the list, in my opinion. Um, Strike Fighters and Sunshark Bomber, they aren't as good as they were. Well, they just aren't as good in general, really, as other fighters. This one, the, the Razor Shark Strike Fighter, yes, okay, maybe with the Quad Iron Turret, I'd just pay the five points to give it a missile pod, make it 150 points, then you're getting like five or six shots at strength uh, six or seven, um, depending on which gun you're firing and which profile. So yeah, you're gonna you're gonna cause some glancings, maybe some penetrants to another flyer. If you're shooting an armor 10 orc bomber, yeah, okay, you're protecting the skies. Maybe take one, if, 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 if you play a lot of flyers often, um, maybe take one, but even then, really, a unit of of broad you can get two broadside suits with interceptor and skyfire and the the high yield missile pods for less points than that. So, I don't see how these are ever going to make anyone's list. I really don't see why you would ever take it, apart from it looks cool. Best bit again, you just flick through these. No, there's no point for them. No, they're not. They're they're too easy to kill. They don't have a use. They aren't quick enough, aren't strong enough, aren't tough enough. They just aren't anything enough for me. Never going to use sniper drone teams. Um, no, never, ever, ever, ever. Why would you take a unit of four of these when you could take, like, for the same, for the equivalent points, you could take, like, 15 crew with sniper rifles who are going to pump out five times as many shots with just as much efficiency because their snipers just like the crew are. 
Hammerhead. Yes, this this edition much much better. I would take a unit of two. If I went up to say two thousand points, I'd probably take two units of two. I would not bother with the ion rifle, ion cannon. You've got enough any troop in the rest of the army. The rest of the army is designed to just obliterate troops. This gun is designed to destroy armor 14, armor 13, armor 12, armor 11, and armor 10 with um, brilliant efficiency. AP1, so you get that really, really important plus two on the damage chart. Fantastic, really good. Strength 10, AP1, pick an armor and go through it, especially with a unit of two. You're getting yourself double chance. Marker light it up, get a few hits, make this BS5, ignore the other unit's cover, and that ignores their jinx save also. So if you're firing against something else, you can use marker lights to ignore their jinx save and also to plus your BS to make them super, super efficient at hitting. Damage chart, you're just going to have to take your luck. You could roll, you could hit with both and roll a one and a two, and then obviously you won't do anything, but. Still worth taking, in my opinion. Burst cannons would never see the light of day. It's got to be smart missile systems. They don't need line of sight. They can ignore um, cover and everything else. So for me, that's definitely worth it. Skyray, again, won't get used. Next up, Skyray gunship again. Not going to get my vote of confidence. Six seeker missiles, six shots. Once you can pump it out first turn and it's then become a most useless thing ever. Yeah, you get Skyfire with it. 10 points extra by yourself a hammerhead. Simple as that, really. You've got the same weapon options down there. Hammerhead is just better in every way, shape and form. Um, yeah, okay, you get Skyfire. But like I said, there's so much better stuff to do with Skyfire. You never need it. Broadsides. Auto-include for me. Heavy rail rifle, no. I would use the high yield missile pods. You get four shots, strength seven, AP four, really good. No plasma rifles. You want the smart missile systems. So then each broadside is pumping out eight shots. A two missile drones each, you're then pumping out 12 shots. A unit three pumping out 36 shots. Out of those 36 shots, two thirds of those are gonna be at strength seven, AP four. That is nails. Um, you pretty much pick a unit and annihilate it. Say you get a couple of mark lights on it. I know I keep going back to mark lights, but that's why I'm saying pathfinders are so vital. Okay, even if you're not mark lighting, you're shooting 36 shots. You're going to hit 18 and you're going to wound, depending on what you're doing, you're going to still do a hell of a lot of damage. If you can mark light them up to BS5, you're just going to obliterate whatever you point at. Literally, you, you know, it's a terminator unit, you're going to cause. 30 wounds. It's mad. Really good. Always take the missile pods. Yeah, this is okay. Maybe you'd want to um, have a unit of one to just pop transports, maybe. But now it's eight instead of ten. I mean, even nine would have been okay, but now they've made it eight, it is literally useless. It was a Land Raider killer. Now it is a Land Raider scraper. You'd be lucky to take Okay, and after that we have KV-128 Storm Surges, <clears throat> new model, absolutely stunning. Um, you've got the cluster rocket system which is 4D6, strength 5, um, really, really good. Um, for anti-infantry especially, the other weapons it can have, the pulse blast cannon or pulse driver cannon, that is the one which is probably the the harder one to pick from pulse driver cannon for me wins it's so range 72 strength 10 ap2 ordnance large blast um whereas the drive um the other one which is the blast cannon is range up to 10 is strength d ap1 heavy 2 but anything other than that i mean like range 30 inches strength 9 ap5 heavy 2 is just not for me you, you shouldn't be within 10 inches of this guy so really for me yeah, I think you need to exchange it for the pulse driver cannon um, and have strength 10 AP2 range 72 all the time you can place your anchors down and then the following turn onwards and can't move but you can fire every gun twice which if you can manage to put an ethereal within 12 of him that means your pulse driver cannon will then get two shots instead of one so you'll be firing two strength 10 ap2 templates 
But because your anchors are down, you can fire twice. So you fire four strength 10 AP2 templates with that then. That's a really good combination. Really something you should think about doing. A twin link smart missile system is good. You'll then obviously be able to fire eight D6 rockets. So he's really strong, really good anti-infantry, four large templates, eight D6 um, strength five rockets, and then eight twin linked strength five rockets from the smart missile system too. So he's really good. Definitely worth taking, especially in larger games. Hunter Kadra um, is basically the formation at the start. That's all right. Retaliation Kadra was the one I was talking about. That's the strongest one, I think. Low altitude deployment means on turn two, anyway, automatically you all deep strike in. It's far too many points to have off the board for two, three, four turns, or three, four turns. But when you automatically come on two, you know when you're coming it's good enough you know it's good because you can come in if you've got some pathfinders you can give them homing beacons you can give stealth suits homing beacons you can deep strike accurately and guaranteed on turn two um these are some of the other formations infiltration stealth cadre um they're all right i mean this this one's pretty good the fire support base they all fire as one basically as one unit so if you mark like someone up four times they're all at plus bit 2bs and all ignoring cover with all of these weapons which is mad and they can all have um tank hunter and monster hunter special rule as well when they will fire at one unit so you can pretty much pick something and just take it off the table pretty good and i mean two units of broadsides and a riptide so that's all you need um to do that that's a really strong really strong formation the other ones the air cast i mean that that formation it doesn't get any stronger they're weak anyway not for, for myself not worth the points um and there we have it into the section at the end here love these pictures love the uh, smoke the detail that they go to to set all these these up great production value warlord tables and other army special rules Bond in life ritual, which means if you're under 25%, you can rally on a double one. Um, oh, you don't need to double one to rally. Failure is not an option, which is the extra point for killing ethereal. Fire team is pretty cool. If you have three riptides or three hammerheads in the squad, they will get plus one ballistic skill. Uh, that works for other vehicles like sky rays, but basically they're the two you'd use. Support and fire is really good. All friendly models with this special in units within six of the charging unit get to fire overwatch as well so if you're charging a unit of fire warriors and there's two other units of fire warriors all of them can fire that one unit even if you're only charging one warlord traits the thing i like about these are they have um if you have if your warlord has no ranged weapons re-roll this result that's good and then if you if your warlord is not jetpack infantry re-roll this result so they've they've been clever with the warlord table and given you options to change stuff about which i like this is all the melee weapons, ranged weapons, um, just as it always is, running you through. These are all the pulse weapons, which would all benefit from the ethereal's um, ability to fire extra shots, which is absolutely awesome. Um, really clever idea. These are the, the pulse blasters that the Breach of Squad would have. Strength 6 AP3 Assault 2 up to 5 inches. 5 to 10, they become only 5, Strength 5 AP5 and 10 to 15 strength 4 AP dash so they, you really really need to get that 5 inches um, up to them. Drones, different types of drones and their special war gear. Um, these are all the extra support systems and vehicle support systems, battlesuit armors, this is all just just basic really. These are the signature systems, these are the only other things that aren't in the list that I've just been through. But again, none of them really worth it. If your model with this war gear does not shoot in the shooting phase, all attacks made by the model in the units reroll fail to hit rolls until the end of the phase. Um, if you're going to take three riptides with the burst cannons each and you're going to overcharge them, that's 36 shots that become twin linked. So I suppose maybe that's worth a little something. But for me, you're, you're wasting a 150 point commander. You know, you're going to give him commander control nodes, fail safe detectors. Um, you know, he's just going to be absolutely wasted, really. You need to give him a gun. Other than that, it's just the profiles and everything here. Weapon skills, police skills, same as every other book, with just a quick reference for your weapons. 
so there we have it the town codex for the greater good if you have any comments or anything i've said that's wrong or if you have found any other combinations or any use for vespid or anything like that um please comment um please like and share the video obviously we did a new channel this is our first video so if you could um you know follow us and that would give us a real real kickstarter into youtube hoping to get some battle reports filmed in the next couple of weeks get them uploaded and then try and do that as a regular thing um keeping progresses of all our armies as we're all uh, doing new new armies and new bits and pieces for this getting them all um fully painted and looking good so thanks very much and i'll see you soon youtubers thank you